You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and in your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second of this HT content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation, bring it to the table. But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn your back until you start try again. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. What's up, everybody? Come on in. Make sure you like the video, share the video, subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. Those of you who are watching from Facebook, please get your butts on over to the Hood Table YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Hood Table. The, not the, the Hood Table on YouTube. Hey, Lisa, how you doing, beautiful? How are you? I hope everybody got a chance to watch the show. Hello, Tanya. Sorry I haven't been on in a while. Thank you so for allowing me to post my comedy show flyer. You are so very welcome. Anytime, George Zilla, you already know. You already know. Anytime there's something going on in the hood, in the neighborhood, in our city, um, let me know if it's for the community. Let me know. I'll post the flyers. You can post the flyers. Um, that's what our The Hood Table group is about on Facebook and our Facebook page on Facebook, you know, to discuss things going on to the community in the community and above. And I did post something on the community um, earlier, but Precious McKesson got back to me. Uh, we will talk about that on another show, though, because... Mm. Okay. But, yes, yeah, so I hope everybody got a chance to watch... Uh, Watch. You said that I say duh. <laughs> duh. D A. Hood table. Yep. Duh. <laughs> but I hope everybody got a chance to watch um, Ruthless. If you have not watched Ruthless, um, this last episode, actually, the last few episodes has been really, really good. Um, as far as this episode, though, it is season one that we are about to review. And then later on tonight in about an hour and 15 minutes. So this review is not going to be long because we got to review Power Ghost 2 season one, episode six. The hiatus is over. The mid season is over and the break is up. So season one, episode six played yesterday and we are going to review that at eight o'clock tonight. So this review right here ain't going to be that long because then we got to review power. So if you ruthless fans are also power fans, be back here at eight o'clock so we can review um, power live power and ruthless is about the only shows that I really um, do live as far as TV show reviews. You say I can't wait for the new season of Ruthless. The new season, we still on. We still on this season one. Are you caught up with season one, Georgezilla? If not, y'all better get caught up. Y'all get because it's gonna be a whole bunch of spoilers in this this review. And again, if anybody wants to um, jump on the screen with me, jump on the stream yard up here and be right next to me on the screen. Uh, let me know. All you have to do is really just click the link right here. Click the link. I'm about to drop it right now. Click the link. That link, you can jump up on the screen with me and actually discuss it with me and do the review with me. But, but, let's just say, that show is crazy, George. It is crazy, but I like it. I love it. It's so different than what Tyler Perry has ever done. I'm all in it. I'm all in it. But you know what, y'all? You know what? We done talked uh, many times about Sarah and Andrew. Um, Sarah and Andrew. And I didn't also try to figure out, because it's so many questions, so many unanswered questions in this show. It's still only on season one. So, you know, we got a long way to go. But Sarah... She believes that her husband, Andrew, is in love with the highest. What do y'all think? 
Do y'all think Andrew is in love with the highest? Like, I keep saying every show, I don't know if Andrew has been completely compromised. He was, when he went to visit his wife, which he had no permission to do, he was supposed to be going to the store, making a run. But when he went to see his wife, um, Sarah, he was trying to act like he wasn't compromised and that everything that he's doing is to basically bust the highest and, you know, take some of them to jail and everything, you know, because, you know, he's working with the FBI undercover or whatnot. But do y'all think that Andrew has been compromised? Some days I'll be like, man, he hasn't. Some days I'll be like, yes, he has. As far as um, Sarah goes, we had talked on several occasions about how we thought that maybe he really was in love with, um, well, not in love with his wife, Sarah, anymore, and that he really wanted to leave her. And how he might have thought that she might be kicking it with Malcolm. How did he know that? I, I don't know how he found out that she might have been kicking it with Malcolm. But remember last time on last episode, he said, is his son really his? And at that point, I knew right then that he knew that she had been cheating on him. Because I was wondering, is he cheating on his wife for the sake of working undercover? Or is he really cheating on his wife and is he really trying to leave her because he thinks that she's cheating on him and that his son might not be his? Y'all let me know. I think, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's his son or if it's Malcolm's son, but I sure would love to know. I hope they uh, one day tackle that issue and maybe take a blood test or maybe his wife Sarah will admit, you know, who the father really is. But obviously, if Andrew thinks that son is not his, she has been kicking it with Malcolm for a minute. They really haven't said how much kicking it per se, that she has been doing with Malcolm. They just show the scenes where, you know, they show him trying to kiss on her, trying to hook up with her, um, trying to get her to, you know, get with him again, and how she was saying, I'm in love with my husband. I'm trying to make it work. You know, all this kind of stuff. We got a child. You know, all that kind of stuff. And Malcolm don't give a damn. <laughs> he don't give a damn about her man Andrew or her relationship with Andrew. He still wants to be with her very much. So, and he basically expresses that to his wife without telling her because his wife has no idea. Like she don't understand what's the problem between them two. Why they're always arguing. Why they're always fussing. Why he don't ever want to come home. Why they're not having sex. You know things like that. She assumes that he's cheating on her, but she has no idea who that really might be. So anyway, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that particular um topic. Hi, Deborah. Hey, fam. You said not going to spoil the show. Just keep on watching. No, he ain't in love with the highest. You don't think he's in love with the highest? What you mean we better catch up? We are caught up. We on, we on episode 16. <laughs> It's only up to episode 16, unless I'm mistaken. Did episode 17 come out? Because I was looking on the BET app and only saw that we were up to see to episode uh, 16. Because 13, 14, and 15 came out on one day, and then 16 came out the next day. So if we're behind, let me know. So And let me know where I can find the latest episodes, because I only see that we're up to uh, episode 16. Grace said, Andrew is solid. He is deep in trying to keep Sarah from blowing his cover. So, so Grace, you don't think that Andrew has been compromised? Like, do you think he really wants to be with Sarah, but he's just like shunning her and treating her horribly to keep her from looking for him? Let me know. Let me know how y'all really feel about that. Or is he really in love with Tally? Because Tally's pregnant. Tally's pregnant. And at first, it was like they wanted to leave. They wanted to go off, you know, get away, escape and everything. But now Andrew doesn't want her to leave. So I don't know. I'm a little bit confused, child. I'm a little bit confused. But y'all, in the highest trailer, when he and Daikon was having a conversation regarding how Daikon didn't wake the highest when they were facing um, the invasion, the highest had made it real clear to Daikon that he is the one in charge. During their conversation, the highest saw a hint of jealousy in Daikon. And when he asked if Daikon was jealous of Andrew, Daikon said, no, your highest. But is he? 
I think Daikon is jealous of everybody. I think Daikon is jealous of everybody. <laughs> and what was up with Oliver's girlfriend, Lacey? What do y'all think about Lacey? Wasn't that kind of sad when she had to leave? Like, she really was under the impression that she was going to do something for the highest and that she was going to do something to make the highest really, really proud and really happy. But then come to find out for, I, I, I think it was purposely done this way. You know, elder mother, you know, the older lady, she had gave her a good old tongue lashing when she spotted her and Oliver, you know, walking together. I think Elder Mother knew what was up. She could tell that there was something going on between the two of them. Um, I don't know if she thought they were having sex, but Andrew sure knew. He mentioned that last episode that he knew that they that he was doing something. But Oliver was like, no, no, no. You know, Lacey, she would never do that. She would never try to tempt me. But did y'all see when Mother bit down and sniffed his crotch? To like make sure that he didn't just have sex. And then it seemed like she was trying to turn him on. And the mother was like, ooh, it's not small. <laughs> oh, the mother be cracking me up. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> You say, oh, okay, I already read your comment. But Elder Mother, she was like, ooh, it's not so small. <laughs> and she was bending all down, smelling his crotch and stuff, trying to smell to see if he... I was like, Mother? Is I wonder if that's what they normally do when they're trying to check to see if somebody has had sex. I do recall, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken, I do recall her doing that once before, but I don't know. I don't know. But I told y'all, I told y'all that I think uh, the mother needs to get some. I don't know where she gonna get some, but I have a feeling. Remember I said I think mother's gonna make one of them boys or one of them young men have sex with her? I really think that's gonna happen. I don't know. She's just acting really weird lately, really weird and little flirtatious and I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But I think, Mother, it has been a minute since she has had some. You can just tell. And I really think that she needs to get laid. Somebody needs to blow her back out. Maybe. Hmm. Should Daikon be the one? <laughs> no, I don't think it'll be Daikon. If Daikon get with Mother, I'm just going to be like, eh. <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh-uh, don't do it, don't do it. But then look who was back. I had almost forgotten about that woman, Melinda. Remember Melinda, y'all? I forgot all about Melinda. That was the one that they had sent to town and told her, do whatever it takes. Mother told her, do whatever it takes to get some intel on the sheriff's department and find out how much knowledge that they know about the cult and their, um, their, uh, the the highest, their master or cult leader, the highest. And she really did. She went down there. She did whatever it takes. Y'all remember that she had got with that white dude in the sheriff's department. She had went home. She pretended like she was homeless, pretended like she had no one. They slept together. She did some things for some change, strange things for some change to him. And she was really on assignment. She was thinking, you know, when they do stuff, they really think that they are on assignment. When they are sent out to do stuff or, you know, told that the highest needs them to do something important, they really look at it as they are on assignment and they really want to make the highest proud. But I think a lot of times they don't really know what they are, you know, stepping into. That's how it seems, especially when they took Lacey. Like, I felt really bad when they had Lacey. Hey, Miss Gina, how you doing? She said, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We just up here discussing Ruthless. <laughs> the spinoff of The Oval, for some of y'all who don't know, Ruthless is a Tyler Perry show. It's the spinoff of The Oval. And I think it's really good. But anywho, anywho, Melinda is back. She finally made it back to um the plantation as I like to call it. But uh <laughs> she might have she finally made it back to their campground um 
and basically lets them know, you know, she found out a little bit of information, but they, the sheriff's department doesn't actually know um, everything that the cult is up to because a cult, they be doing a lot of stuff. They be selling girls, selling teenagers. Right now, we just found out last week that they're trying to sell the ones under 12. So they're trying to recruit some more females. And they got Albert out there, you know, trying to recruit some more females. And they need some that are under 12. So they're selling drugs. They're selling children. They're selling young girls. Um, they're doing a lot of things that they are not supposed to be doing, including the highest, um, having sex with the boys. Whew. Okay. Last episode. Y'all know we had discussed how the highest was with William. That, that's, that scene. Mm, that was kind of hard to watch. That was kind of hard to watch, but all the people in there, they be trying to please the highest. You say, yep, elder mother can smell the sex in the air, and she wants some. Yes, yeah, she wants some. <laughs> she wants some Oliver. Oliver might sleep with her to try to find out where Lilo to. Good idea. That is a good. You know what? I can see that happening. I can see that happening. But what did y'all think about Lilo? I was like, okay. First of all, <laughs> first of all, my first thought of Lilo, I was like, who is that man with the drop top demanding to be let on the compound? I was like, who the hell is Mr. Lilo? He he was talking uh, talking stuff to Daikon. He said, y'all mofos are crazy when Daikon offered him a drink. And then I thought Daikon was mean. I thought the highest was me. But then when I first saw Lilo, I was like, when he said, tell that old bitch, and he was talking about Elder Mother, when he said, that was like the first time this whole entire season that I heard somebody talk bad about Mother. <laughs> he said, tell that old bitch to bring me my girls and skip to it, my nigga. <laughs> Nikon was like, okay. I'm like, who is this man? And then come to find how. There was a reason why the highest didn't want to see Lilo. He kept trying to tell them, you know, handle Lilo, you know, keep him out of here. Don't let him in. Daikon did his best to try not to let uh, Lilo in there, but Lilo wasn't having that. He wanted to speak to the highest personally about his girls. But wasn't that funny when Lilo said the highest trailer smelled like ass? When he said the highest trailer smelled like ass, I was dead. <laughs> the highest said, he said, oh, those are incense. Those are incense. What you smelling is incense. Lilo said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. It smelled like ass up in this joint. <laughs> You said you love Lilo. He showed up and showed out. He had him. He had him shook. Lilo had him shook. Lilo had him shook. I was like, "Who is this brother?" And then to come to find out that he was his corrupt. Oh man, this stuff runs deep. This stuff runs so deep. Lilo. First of all, first of all, he's there to pick up some girls. He gets the girls, and I, I don't know if he prostitutes them or if he sells them to somebody else who prostitutes them. But the, the deal is, the deal is, Lilo um, was the highest as a parole officer, and Lilo gave um, the highest a deal. He told him that since he wanted to start, because, you know, the highest, he became the highest in prison. And when he got out, he wanted to have his own little coat, his own little land. So Lilo had got him all that land so that he could put all those trailers on for his compound and have his little coat and do everything he wanted to do, all that coat-like behavior and all that. Lilo has also been keeping the coat under the radar. And that's why the sheriff in town, they still don't know what really goes on in there. So Lilo has been helping them um, kind of like being unseen. But in exchange for all that, the highest has been helping him to get drugs and his girls. 
So the highest, they recruit girls. Then they turn around and they either sell them or they give them to Lilo. And that, that's the part I don't, I'm not too sure on. If they are giving Lilo girls and selling others to somebody else. Because if they're giving Lilo girls, you know, they, they still need money and stuff. And they're trafficking in his drugs from the from the from the coast. So, but from the looks of it, it didn't seem like Lilo was giving them anything in exchange except for their land. So I think on the side they'd be selling drugs and the girls on the side as well. At least that's what I believe. That's what I believe. But yeah, Lilo had him shook. He really had him shook. He was like, tell mother, he called when he called her that old bitch. When he told Daikon to skip to it, my nick. I was like, okay, I don't know who this is at that time. I was like, I don't know who this is right now, but he's somebody important. I I would have never thought that that was his uh, pro officer. But anyway, anyway, he wants to, he wants them to move. He told them that he got some dope at the border. He needs to be moved at the compound. He also needed him some girls. Um, and then the highest said that basically what he's going to do is use the children as mules and send them to Mexico on assignment. So again, these children will probably get sent to Mexico crossing the border and they have no idea what they're going to be getting into. They could be going down there to get put in jail. They could go down there and get um, traded. You know how the children is. Okay. You know how they do children. And they're going to have them as mules. So you never know. They could get shot. Anything could happen in exchange for drugs and their children. So I don't know. I don't think that's really cool. But hey, that's how they run things. But the highest he was going through all, going through all that. I'm like, y'all going through all that for that land and for his boys? That Lilo got him wrapped around? mm 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 I guess. But as soon as the highest told Lilo that their other mother got something for him, I already knew. Like, did y'all already knew that it was going to be Lacey? Did y'all know that? I had a feeling it was going to be Lacey. And again, I'm going to get back to mother. The way that she was was treating, I think that something was up. And I guess, like I said before, the men, I wish, I wish they would really get on this topic of the men having sex with the women. Like when mother said that she thought Ruth was pregnant. Was she thinking that Ruth was pregnant by the highest or by the coronation or by somebody else in the camp? And do y'all think Ruth is pregnant? I don't see no signs yet that Ruth might be pregnant. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But Elder Mother, I think she had to send Oliver a message not to mess with the females. But again, I ask, why can't the brothers mess with the females? Why can't they get permission to mess with the females? It seemed like if they did, um, their, their uh, cult, you know, the population would get bigger and bigger and they won't have to always send people out of town or out on the outskirts or looking for homeless kids, you know, to bring into the, the compound. But hey, hey, you said, first of all, I might say this episode had me like, Tyler Perry, I didn't know we could see all that. <laughs> you know what, Kalani? <laughs> Kalani, we were going to get to that too. We're going to get to that too. You said you want to see Lilo and Andrew throw down. Oh yeah, that would be that would be a good that'd be a good scene. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? But yeah, so yeah, I had a feeling that my elder mother was gonna send him a message. Um, she wasn't trying to go though. She wasn't trying to go. She must. Oh, she didn't understand what was going on. She brought Lacey, you know, to the coronation trailer, you know, for Lilo to check out. The girl, she didn't understand. She knew that she was going to be on a special assignment. I don't think she had no idea that she was about to be sold or given away. And she really seemed like she was in love with Oliver. So I I don't know. But anywho, anywho, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Now, in the punishment trailer, in the pun I was going to get to it, honey. I was going to get to it, honey. In the punishment trailer, y'all, Zane, she was still inside the trailer, scared out of her mind to be punished. 
Uh, Ruth was trying to calm her down, but Zane was hysterical. So she told her that she was going to ask Daikon to allow her to punish her instead of Daikon. And the girl was still acting crazy. She was still wilding out, uncontrollably upset, hysterical. But Ruth did manage to persuade Daikon in allowing her to punish Zane. And that was only because Daikon, he knew that Ruth used to be a madam. And he wanted to see how Ruth got down with her punishment because maybe in the future, I think they would possibly allow Ruth to dish out the punishment. And that might be a good thing for the ladies though, because she could be in there pretending that she is whooping on them, just like Daikon was pretending like he was whooping on Ruth when he was blowing her back out. When mom, when mom, I was about to say when mama, when mother was sitting outside the trailer, but then I was like, what kind of freaky shit are they up to now? That scene, y'all. You said she keeps sleeping with Daikon. She will. Yeah, she keeps sleeping with him. She will be. And then when uh, Mother find out, what she thinks going to happen? Mm -hmm. But that scene in the trailer, in the punishment trailer, when Daikon and Ruth they got undressed. I was like, why is Ruth taking off her cloak? Why is she taking off her cloak to whoop this girl Zane? Then she had Daikon sit in the chair. She had Daikon sit in the chair. And he sat in the chair. And then she had him pull his pants down. And then she had him pull his junk out. And then Rue commenced to whoop in Zane in her in her nightie, in her nightgown, while Daikon was standing behind them getting off on that. I was like, what in the hell? What in the entire heck? I was just sitting there like this. And then not only then he pulled his junk out his pants, but Tyler Perry showed us what it looked like. I was like, ooh, child. Mm. 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 Somebody had told me. <laughs> we have a Facebook group called Ruthless, right? that I created when Ruthless first started. If you want, you can join it. Just look up Tyler Perry's Ruthless BT TV show fan group. Um, I, can, I guess I can't let the, drop the link down because there are a lot of fan groups out there. So I'm going to drop the link down. So if anybody wants to join our Ruthless fan group that I created is my group. I created it on Facebook. I have a The Hood Table Facebook group and I have a Ruthless TV show Facebook group. So the link that I just dropped is to our Ruthless group. So if you want to join our Ruthless Facebook group, click the link that I just dropped. You said X-rated. Man, it was. I did not expect to see all that this episode. I was shocked. I was shocked. But, but, but should I have been shocked? Because everything that Tyler Perry has had them do in this script, in the scenes, in the storylines, is kind of like shocking as well. Especially last episode when we saw William and he was, oh my God, ooh, child. I was like, ooh, the highest, you was a dirty mother. I was like, the highest is a mean mother. Man. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Child, child. That poor William. Ruth better get him up out of there. Ruth better get him up out of there. I have a feeling that if they don't get William up out of there soon, William is going to try to, I don't know, maybe attack, maybe attack the highest. I don't know. Because for one, the highest, he be getting high as a kite. When he be, um, when he had the guys come in, when he had the boys or the young men come in, he be high as a kite. When he demands them to do the things that they do to him, he be high as a kite. He literally be passed out when they be doing it, whatever they, you know, doing whatever it is that they do. So I wonder if William might try try something because he seemed like he seems very, very, very depressed. Um, I don't know. 
He he seems very depressed, very depressed. And I think Ruth can tell because when he broke down crying to Ruth and told her that he didn't want to get in trouble, he didn't want to get in trouble by the highest because the 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 punishment, the punishment is severe for those who get whooped. But I believe they are more severe just as they are with William when, you know, the guys disobey or don't want to do what, you know, the highest require of them. So anyhow, anyhow. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that one as well. Um, I know that we had discussed that elder mother thinks that Ruth might be pregnant. She did mention how she thinks Ruth might be pregnant. I don't know if there's something, you know how some older people, they just know when you're pregnant. They they just know. You know, I don't know, some old school thing or something. They just know when you're pregnant. So, you know, some people think she probably got pregnant during the coronation. Some people think she might get pregnant by Daikon if she keeps having sex with Daikon. And I have a feeling that they will continue having sex. After the last the last episode, when he was getting off to her, whooping on uh, Zane, yeah, they're going to continue having sex. Now, pretty soon, though, Ruth is going to have to try to find her way to that key, to the children, so she can try to make a plan to get the children out of there. So hopefully this is all what this is leading up to and not Daikon just enjoying some of his fantasies or something, you know, the boy child, I'm like, ooh, Daikon, ooh. Mm -mm -mm. And I love me some dark-skinned me. Ooh, I was like, ooh, child of fairy. Ooh, let me clutch my pearls. I was like, ooh, did you just show us that? Did you just show, he just had it all in his hand, all like, <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Barbara, you said that is my show. The highest, he is a whole mess. The highest is a whole mess. You said I don't like her awesome. I don't like, man, I don't like mother either. I'm telling you, mother, she's so old. I think they should just get her a man. You know how the highest has like his choice of the young guys. I think the high, highest should grant mother that because she's so old she's elderly you are you can just tell that she needs she she just needs she needs something she needs something in her life she needs something to occupy her time and i just think that he should grant her her own servant you know servant i'm gonna put that in quotations servant <laughs> to take care of her every needs that's what I think. That's what I think. Hey, Linda. Hey, how you doing, cousin? How you doing, Faye? But yeah, that is what I think. That is what I think. I think the highest they need to give her her own personal servant. She needs her own pool boy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But anywho, y'all, that is my little overview on the highest and uh, the cult and ruthless. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. I hope you guys are enjoying the reviews. I love having these live reviews with you with some of my favorite shows. That's why some of them I just record and upload, and some of them I come up here live and interact with y'all and get your opinion on different things. But again, if you want to actually join our Ruthless Facebook group, the link is right there. That's our roofless link for our roofless. Uh, that's our Facebook link for our roofless Facebook group. So if you want to join, feel free to join. I don't know how many people are in the group. I really don't know how many members. Let me check over here. How many members we got? Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. We got like 300 members. I didn't even know we had that many. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. We got like 300 members in our Facebook group, the Ruthless Facebook group. So if you want to join, just click on the link in the chat, the Facebook link in the chat. And um, yeah, she needs some. She needs some bad. If she saw what Daikon was working with, then again, Oliver. I wonder what... <sighs> Oliver is young. You know what? It was so funny when uh, I heard Elder Mother say young and strapping. Because how many times, y'all, have I told y'all that my grandma used to, rest in peace, my grandma, who um, who uh, raised, like, a lot of our, a lot of my cousins, and, you know, uh, she used to always say, 
to the boys. Y'all are young and strapping young men. And she would always use that term like if she would tell them to go shovel or go do this or take out the trash, you know, something that they might be like grunting about. I'm tired. You know how boys are sometimes. But she would tell them, y'all are some young and strapping young men. Y'all ain't got no problems doing these chores and stuff like that. I never forget her using that term when I was growing up. So when I heard Elder Mother say it on the show, when she said young, strapping, I was like, my grandma said it first. <laughs> but yeah, she need a man. Hopefully they'll get her some. They'll get her a man something, something, some toys, something. But mm, they probably don't believe in toys. Especially when they got all that meat. I mean, all those men around there. Did I say meat? Yeah. Okay, let me let okay. Let's wrap this up. I'm gonna wrap this up. Make sure y'all like and sh like and share the video. Subscribe to the hood table. It's at the bottom. See it over there? The hood table. And that is our cash app as well. If you want to donate to the um cash get to the, our cash app. If you want to support the uh hood table monetarily, feel free. No pressure, no pressure. If it touches you, donate to the cash app. But but please like and share the video and subscribe to the hood table. If you are watching from YouTube, I mean from Facebook, go over to YouTube, click your YouTube app on your phone and subscribe to the hood table on YouTube. Please and thank you so very much. And we are also on Facebook, as I said before, and Twitter and IG and thehoodtable.com where you can find our The Hood Table merchandise and you can receive a monthly newsletter if you want to sign up for that. So we got about 30 minutes. I'm going to be back. I'm going to freshen up, put some powder on this face because these lights is really bright and they make you kind of sweat. You know, these lights that I use to go live. But um, I'm going to go ahead and refill my glass and take me a 30-minute hiatus. I will be back here at 8 o'clock. I'm about to post the links all over. So if you're on Facebook and you follow me, you'll see the link. If you're on YouTube and you follow me, you'll see the link. But we are going to discuss power. Episode 6, power is back. The hiatus is over. They've been gone since what? July? They've been gone for the Grisnip. July, August, something like that. But yeah, so Power is back. And we're going to review it. It was lit. If y'all didn't watch it, y'all got about 30 minutes to watch it. <laughs> so make sure you guys tune back in. 8 o'clock. I'll be back. 30 minutes. Stay safe. 